Hi, Ed Sleipo again from Health Development in the Southeastern Trust. Well, thanks for tuning into this fourth clip. Today, we're talking about supporting somebody under pressure. Now, yes, this is useful during this time of big change with Encompass, but these skills are useful at any time you're working with somebody or living with somebody who's under a lot of pressure. We hope you find this helpful. Now, like all the sessions, um, the ground rules still apply. We're not telling anybody what to do. We're putting ideas on the table we hope are helpful. You choose what's right for you. Those are the five themes we're looking at through these clips. But what's important, we are going to point you to the you know, uh, page tiger where you can get support if you feel you need it. Now, why we think this is so important. Look at that quote. You can't pour from an empty cup. Take care of yourself first. And people find self-care Maybe a little bit selfish or self-indulgent. No, it's not. Think about those instructions you get on an airplane. If you're not looking after yourself, hmm, you're no good to anybody. But I love this quote, and I think this is really useful for working with somebody or living with somebody who's feeling overwhelmed. When somebody's feeling overwhelmed, it's our task to share in our calm, not join in on their chaos. We hope this gives you some ideas how best to do that. Now, what's my... What's important when somebody is feeling overwhelmed? And we all have stress at times. There's no question about that. So, so some of the things that are helpful, well, maybe it's important to communicate. How can I help? Now, this is very different. Think about this sequence. You say, can I help you with anything? They say, no, I'm okay. You say, all right, let me know. Hmm. So maybe if we just change the language a little bit, instead of asking if you can help, ask, how can I help? That makes it easier for them to see there's different ways that you could be there for them. You may want to communicate. It's okay to take a break and step outside. And that happens so much. If you're under pressure and you're not thinking straight, go back to the brain. You know, those stress hormones are hitting. We're not thinking straight. Maybe we just need to step out of it for a bit. It's okay to take a break. And what we're doing is, is listen to people. Acknowledge, look, stress is normal. It's a normal part of life. It's something that's wrong with them it's normal uh, acknowledge it sometimes when you validate it mm, that's helpful we all need words of encouragement words of encouragement give us motivation to keep going when things are, are tough and maybe we just need to get beside somebody look i'm here if you want to talk let let somebody know you're available to talk opens up a safe place and good listening is a, a useful tool and i will point you to a wonderful book around listening by Bill Miller. You want to build your skills on being a better listener. It's called Listening Well, The Art of Empathic Understanding by William Miller. Brilliant book. One of the best reads I've ever, I've ever had. Now, some things that's maybe not useful to say. Um, you got to think about this. Oh, everything will be okay. Well, maybe that's not really that helpful might sound supportive at the time, but look, things aren't well for them right now. So you know, to say things will work out, no, it's not acknowledging what they're going through right now. And to say, oh, we're all stressed, you know, right now, don't make this worse. Well, that's very different than normalizing stress. I mean, you know, it's, it's possibly making them feel bad. And the final thing to tell somebody when they're under stress, and we've all done this, to tell somebody to calm down. That downstairs brain's on fire. To tell somebody to calm down, is that really going to work? Probably not. Um, to put them on defensive, I'm, I'm calm, I'm not. Um, even though there's a bit of truth to it, hmm. another problem with telling somebody to calm down, it doesn't give them a roadmap of how they can work through it. Some of those skills we talked about in session two, about calming skills might be more appropriate, but... Um, you know, you very often, if your your nervous system's on fire, it's really hard to switch it off in an instant. And the final thing to say, if we're telling somebody to calm down and we're not calm ourselves, we're just adding fuel to the fire. So maybe there's a more helpful way to say, you know, I'm here for you. Uh, I understand what you're what you're feeling, you know, going through. Well, that can help the person feel there's nothing wrong with them. It's a situation. That's pretty important. And if things are really blown up, it's hard for me to talk with things when things are so intense. Now, that's not saying you don't want to talk, but things need to calm down. 
and to say, I'm going to take a pause for a moment just to slow things down. What you're actually modeling is using relaxation te techniques yourself, breathing, soft touch. Even if they don't follow your lead, you're communicating, look, we can calm down. How can I help us move through this? Um, well, that's saying, you know, there's a way forward. There's a sense of movement. Um, we can do something. And to say I'm here for you, most human beings do find it's profoundly comforting if you know you're not alone. To say I'm here with you, um, that could be really important. And the final thing, well, do you need to vent or would you like some advice? Now, if you're given advice, always ask permission. Um, check that they want it, they're ready for it, provided, and most important, see how how they make sense of it and want to use it. But by given that statement, do you need to vent or would like advice? Well, that's giving them choice. Um, sometimes they might need to get it out. Other times, okay, you're giving them choice. Those little techniques can be helpful. Now, the bottom line, stress is normal. It's a normal part of life. But when it gets overwhelming, when that downstairs build, stress builds in that downstairs brain, we can find it hard to think things through. So how we suggest that we help each other when stress builds, be active in looking after yourself and your own well-being. Make sure you're coming at this in a calm place. Be a role model. Ask for help when you need it. What you're communicating, it's okay to ask for help. Let's be there for each other. And the health services is tough. You're working with people. We work with a lot of pain, a lot of distressing situations, illnesses. Let's be there. We, we are, are there for each other. I like how people talk about, you know, working in, you know, the family of the Southeastern Trust. That's a nice sense of connection. Listening is one of the best skills we have when we actively listen. Validate stress levels. Acknowledge that stress is normal. But keep your goals and values forefront. And let's look after each other. As we all got a letter, you know, within Compass, thanking people for effort. But what I like what Roshan Coulter, our chief executive, said, our staff are the backbone uh, of the trust. Well, yeah, I would agree with that, big time. But what happens if you do a lot of hard work, your back's a bit sore? Well, you rest it. Um, you ask for better help if you have to move something heavy. And if your back's really sore, you ask for a better help. Those things apply here too, but they apply to any stressful situation. Now, I'm going to say this. Don't, when things stress builds, don't join in on the moaning. There's evidence looking at the neuroscientists. They speculate that complaining might be as contagious as yawning. We tend to join in. So don't join in on the moaning. You know, step outside, acknowledge, and sometimes a really nice way to acknowledge somebody's moaning it's what's called a double-sided reflection go with active listening you you do reflect what they're struggling with but you reflect another way to look at it you're validating or putting another you know skill on the table so just some ideas of how we can help somebody under pressure we can use these at work we can use these in any areas of our lives now there is support out here for you. We mentioned this. We mentioned this in every clip. That page tiger with all the support there. And we're recording these sessions because, yes, we had them live, but we also realized people were very busy. So by putting them online, putting them available, well, folks can watch them in their own time, not just necessarily to now within Compass, but at any time because we acknowledge working in the, whether you're starting a new job or a new role in the trust or there's a change in your life or just pressure starting to build. These clips hopefully will give you ideas. What I'm really keen on that list is supportive conversations when things do get you know, tough for us, whether we use Inspire, your know, workplace or our psychological support and Live Well. You know, Live Well has a, a wealth of information that we can use. The coaching, the recovery college, it gives us all tools we can use. What we'll ask, let's use them sooner rather than later. Now, on, on the, you know, the well-being sessions, we would do advertise some self-help that's available for you. You know, Ben, don't break uh, that low-intensity self-help for building resilience and self-compassion. They both sit on a search website. We did the clips with that to give people a visual um, view of the workbooks. Um, so they're, they're there. Um, the links are on, on the page tagger. But if you do use it, we will ask for a bit of feedback. There's an evaluation link because how are we going to know it's helpful unless people tell us? 
So thanks very much for tuning into this clip. The last clip we're going to have is pulling the themes together and a bit more. But like all the other first three clips, there's a paper that talks about how we support people under pressure. And any feedback, let us know. Because, you know, like we said, these are tough times, but working in the, in the health service, this is not new. Working in the health service is challenging at times. There's also a lot of benefit. Because when we are helpful to people, and I think none of us have had more rewarding experiences when someone tells us, hey, what you did for me was helpful. So we hope this helps you help them. Well, no matter what role you have in the trust, whether you're frontline, supportive work, all this stuff, we're all in it together. So we hope this was helpful. Thanks very much for tuning in. We have one more clip to do. Thanks very much.